Have you ever played a game of Tetris or tried to fit irregular shapes into puzzles? If so, then you've already dabbled into the world of geometric counting. So let's take a deeper dive into this exciting field of mathematics and let's see how we can use it to solve interesting problems from competition. Let's start off with a cool formula to find the number of rectangles in a grid. So let's say we've got a rectangular grid. And the question is, in this grid, how many rectangles are there? And we need more than just these small little ones. Every type of rectangle. It could be this, this, more, or even more. There's way too many possibilities to count here. A lot of them. So, to do this, we have a really cool trick we can use. Notice here, we've got five rows of lines here, right? We've got one row, one row, two row, three rows, four rows, five rows, right? So, what we're going to do is select two of them. So let's say we select this line and this line. So those are two of the horizontal lines. Now what we can also do is select two vertical lines. So let's say that we select the, these two lines over here. Guess what we form in the inside? That's a rectangle right there. So essentially every rectangle can be formed by taking two vertical lines, two horizontal lines, and they bound a region that is a rectangle. So now we can just count the number of ways to choose two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. By the way, if you haven't already checked out the previous videos in this series, we talked about many other important topics in combinatorics like permutations, combinations, stars and bars, and many more. Definitely check that out. So over here, we must select two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. In total, we have five vertical lines, right? Of which we must select two in this case. And we also have five horizontal lines. So the number of ways is just five choose two for the horizontal lines and five choose two for the vertical lines. That's a hundred right there because five choose two is just 10. And the general formula is just m plus 1 choose 2 times n plus 1 choose 2, right? In an m by n grid, if there's, let's say, m over here and n over here, there's n plus 1 vertical lines or n plus 1 horizontal lines and m plus 1 vertical lines. m plus 1 vertical lines over here. And this general formula holds true for any m by n grid a really cool application of combinations to geometric counting. Let's look at this problem over here. How many rectangles, which are not squares, are in a 5x4 grid of squares? Hmm, interesting. Let's draw a 5x4 grid of squares. So, the tricky part about this problem is that we're trying to count not just the rectangles, but the rectangles which are not squares, right? Because squares are indeed rectangles. So we can do this by using complementary counting because what we can do is find the number of rectangles and then subtract the number of squares. So we have a 5 by 4 grid over here. How many rectangles are there? We just learned this. We have six vertical lines. So we can choose any two of them. We choose six, two of the six vertical lines and we've got one, two, three, four, five horizontal lines. So we can choose any of the two horizontal lines and any two of these lines, any combination will map out a rectangle just like this on the inside. Any combination will map out a rectangle and it could be anything, any possible rectangle it will map out. So there's just 6 choose 2 times 5 choose 2. Different rectangles. And 6 choose 2 is 6 times 5 divided by 2. 5 choose 2, 5 times 4 divided by 2. 
That's 15 times 10, 150. So, 150 rectangles. Well, what about squares? How do we find the number of squares? Hmm. So, to do this, let's take the different cases. We've got one by one. This is easy, right? There's a 5 by 4 grid, so there's just going to be 5 times 4 equals 20. Now, 2 by 2. Here's where it start, things start to get interesting. There's a bunch. It's 2 by 2, and we really don't want to manually count them. So here's a cool property. For any 2 by 2 square, just like this, notice how it spans 2 units on the y-axis and two units on the x-axis. So let's say this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, right? Notice how two of these one line segment over here spans two vertical units on the y-axis and the similarly it spans two units on the x-axis. So to find the number of ways, what are the different possibilities for two squares that the two by two different units, the two by two square can span out on the x and y axes. Okay, so x axes. It can, the two by two rectangle, it can include these first two squares, the first two units on the x axis. It can include the second and third, the third and the fourth, the fourth and the fifth. On the y axis, first and second, second and third, and third and fourth. As you can see here, there's three possibilities for the different, the different units the square can span out on the y-axis and four on the x-axis, so that's 12. And notice here that every combination of the y-axis, the two units, so it will span out on the y and x-axis will form a square. For example, if we have this one and this one, it can form this square over here, right? Because the square spans out these two units on the y-axis and these two on the x-axis. So it's just four times three, 12. Now three by three, okay, three by three. How should we do this? Interesting. So for three by three, we can actually take a very similar approach. Every single three by three square will span out three units on the y-axis, like this, and three on the x-axis. So we can just count the number of ways it can span out three units on the y-axis, count the number of ways it can span out three units on the x-axis, and multiply them, and we get our answer. So what are the possibilities? It can span out these three units on the y-axis, or these three units on the y-axis. On the x-axis, it can span out the first three squares, the second three squares, and the third three, or the last three squares. And that's going to be three times two. So for three by three, we've got three times two equals six. What about four by four? Now for this, we can do our same method, but because four by four, it's almost the entire grid, this one might be easier just to count manually. So a four by four grid, it would be something like this, right? That's four by four. And that's one possibility. And the only other possibility is this one right here. So it's just two ways. That's it. Just two. And notice that if we use our same logic, we could see there's one way it spans out four units on the y-axis and two ways on the x-axis. Just two. Let's add these all up. 20 plus 12 plus 6, plus 2. That is 32 plus 8, 40. So the number of rectangles that are not squares is just 150 minus 40. That's 110. And we are done. Let's summarize. So rectangles just use the rectangle counting formula, right? We select two vertical lines, two horizontal lines. And squares, we just take the different cases and see that the number of ways we can just look at the units of squares they span out on the x and y axes. And this gives us a clever argument to get the answer. Okay, let's now explore this problem.
How many squares up with side length square root 5 can be found in a 5 by 5 grid of points? So this is not a regular grid like we've been exploring. This time, it's a grid of points. So a grid of points just means that we have 5 by 5 points arranged in a, a fashion like this. And now the key observation here is that square root 5 is not an integer, which means that they're not going to be on the grid lines like we saw here. It's not going to be on the grid lines. It's not going to be something like this. Because those will all have whole number side lengths. We're going to ha be having diagonal side lengths. So things are going to be a little bit more interesting in this problem over here. For example, the side length could be something like this. And a square could be something like this. Notice how they're not on the grid lines. They're just connecting different points together, right? Okay, so square root 5. Well, can square root 5 be on the grid lines? Like we can have 1, we can have 2, we can have 3, we can have 4. We can't have square root 5. Only whole numbers. So then it must be on a diagonal, right? Square root 5 on a diagonal. Oh, but if it's on a diagonal, there must be Pythagorean theorem. Because if it's on a diagonal, there must be two legs that form its hypotenuse. Any diagonal can be expressed in this property. So for example, this diagonal, it has two legs that form a right triangle. So any diagonal in this grid, we can draw a 90 degree angle there. Let these, let's say we have two side lengths, A and B, and these are integers because as you can see here, they go from this point to this point. It's an integer number, a side length. And this over here is the diagonal, right? So what we must have by the Pythag theorem, a squared plus b squared equals diagonal squared. Now square root 5 is our diagonal. And so for square root 5, what must we have? d squared, diagonal is square root 5, squared is 5. So we must have a squared plus b squared equals 5 where a and b are positive. And if a equals 1, then a squared is 1. And for a squared to, plus b squared to be 5, then b squared must be 4. So b is 2. Oh, so that works. a equals 1, b equals 2. And if b equals 2, then a equals 1. So, and those are the only two possibilities. So essentially what that means is to get a diagonal of square root 5, we either have, must have something like this or something like this. No matter what, notice how 2 and 1, 2 and 1, to form square root 5. That's the only possible Pythag triple. Cool. So now, how do we count this? Hmm. Squares of side length root 5. That, that's interesting, isn't it? Huh. So to count this, let's see. Let's see some possibilities for those root 5 side lengths. What are some even diagonals that are possible? So this is a possible diagonal, of course, right? And if, if this were to form a square, what would it be? Well, it could be something like this, can't it? That's a square. Cool. So a square with side length square root 5. Cool. But that's just one possibility. There are many more. Hmm. Oh, there's another one. Look right here. That also works, right? They're all root 5 because they're 1, 2. Interesting. We've already got 2. What if, so let's just write that down, 2, 2 ways, plus more to come, hopefully. Now what if instead we had this as part of our square? Well, that would give the possibility we just explored, right? The two possibilities. That would give the one possibility. And if we had this as one of our diagonals, it gives this possibility. Notice how both of these squares are kind of in this region. Both of these squares are in this region over here, right? It's like they're kind of inside them, right? This 3 by 3 region or 4 by 4 grid of points 
these two inscribe are kind of like inscribed squares they're kind of inside this boundary we can think of it as interesting so is that it though is there any other possibilities the interesting thing is all such squares much must, must must have this kind of boundary around them we can't just have a, a square floating in midair because for it to be square root 5, there must be 1 here and 2 here, right? 1, 2. Similarly, 2 here, 1 here. 2 here, 1 here. 2, 1. And as you can see, for our square to be side length root 5, it must be inside a square of root of side length 3. So what are the possibilities here for the squares of side length 3? Aha! We can use our trick now from the previous problem. The number of squares of side length 3, well, we can just look at the, we, the unit that spans along the x and y axes. So along the y axis, it can span out these three units or these three units. Along the x axis, it can span out these three units or these three units, right? And every combination of, if you take this one and this one, for example, that will form a 3 by 3 square that spans out those squares on the x's and y axes. Cool trick. So the number of 3 by 3 squares is 2 times 2 is 4. And in each 3 by 3 square, as you can see, we've got two possibilities for a square of root 5. So the answer is just going to be 4 times 2, 8. Wow, that's so cool, isn't it? So the key idea for this problem was to see square root 5 must be 1, 2 because of Pythagorean theorem. And to get that, we saw some possibilities here and notice that they all seem to be inside this kind of region, this kind of square region over here. And then we saw that we can just count the number of 3 by 3 squares in a grid of points and then see that there's two squares that can be inscribed in each such region. So 4 times 2, 8. A great geometric counting problem. And by the way, all these examples that are in the Mastering AMC8 book, you can check out for free by clicking on the free book in the description. It's a comprehensive book with explanations, detailed explanations, not just solutions. Many other interesting examples you can check out.